don't like them. <laughs> I have Revox too, but I didn't want to show off. Three, two, one, we have speed. See no evil, hear no evil. Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor. Richard, I have a question for you. Because I remember vividly you winning the Writers Guild Award and the American Academy of Comedy Award for your contribution to the screenplay of Blazing Saddles, were you and Gene friendly then? No. Did you, did you meet? Did you Never speak? Never met, no. We didn't meet until the hotel lobby in Calgary Mm -hmm. for Silver Streak. Isn't that interesting? But you, you were aware of each other. Did, did oh, you know sure. Richard, Richard oh, was yeah. working on that script? No. Oh, uh, I knew that Richard was working on it. Oh, yeah. Because I knew Mel. Mm -hmm. You certainly But did. I didn't know that I was going to be playing the part. He had given me the script to, to uh, look at a different Harvey Corman's part. I can say it now because Harvey wouldn't mind. I wouldn't have said it ten years ago. But I said, no, I, that's, I, that's, I said, but the other, the Waco kid, maybe that is, no, 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 I want an older guy, I want a, a Dan Daly is going to play that, Dan Daly. And, but I ended up playing that part through a, a series of accidents. But I knew that Richard had been working on the script. But we didn't work, work together until Silver Streak, 1976. Yes, and from Calgary to Toronto to Union Station. Yeah, that's right. It's interesting being with both of you again and remembering, I'm looking at Richard now and remembering the Canadian content in your life because you've told some wonderful stories about some of the hotels and clubs you played in in Toronto before you were winning awards for yes. writing for, for Blazing Saddles and Lily Tomlin's Lily which Windsor. was another prize winner. <laughs> Windsor, that was when you were doing the Bridge Cities. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you worked in Toronto. You told me about yes. some hotels that are no I longer did. there. No, the, the Warwick or something like that? I don't remember. Was it the Warwick? Yeah, something like that. All I know it was a wrestler's convention there. They used to stay there all the time. Wrestlers or wrestlers? Mm -hmm. Okay, wrestlers. Oh, wrestlers. Yeah. Did I say wrestlers? Sorry. I thought you meant... Well, it was Canada. Stampede. Could have been yeah. either. No, then that was interesting. You know. Why was it interesting, Richard? Because they're <laughs> big kids. You know, the wrestlers you see, you think, these guys are... You know, like yeah. a hawk and they're just big kids. People. But they're humongous kids. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. And this was before steroids. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were doing it for real. Yes. Just Wheaties. Yes, they were tough guys, but they had a lot of fun. They were like kids, though. You know, they had their little feelings hurt. They were so, so big, but you could hurt their feelings so easy. I met Andre the Giant. Oh, I never mm -hmm. met Andre. I'd like to meet Andre. <laughs> we have to point out that we're talking about Silver Streak because Arthur Hiller, who yes. directed you, you and See No Evil, Hear mm -hmm. No Evil, was of course the director of Silver Streak, but that's 1976. Mm -hmm. And as we sit here in the summer of 89, and remember, it's not as if both of you haven't done a lot of work in the interim, but why did it take so long for you to get together? Was it not the right script? Did you read anything in the interim that you considered doing together? I never did. Read anything that where I felt, you know, to call Gene out, this would be good for us. I never did. But Gene, have you, have you and Richard stayed in touch? In the interim, have you seen each other socially? No. Been out of no events, no Not event, between no 80 charities? and 89. No. Really? No. Since then, but not in between. I know, improbable it's, as it sounds, we didn't. Well, you know, because there's a misconception out there. The world wants to believe that, that you, both, you both live in California, you have worked together, there's a history with both of you, and that you might have seen each other. But then actors say all the time, you know, making a movie is like going on a pleasure cruise. You get on the boat, you do the job, the boat docks, people say goodbye, and in some cases don't see each other again for years. That's, that's often true, probably most often true. I think in Richard's and my case, there's also another ingredient, which is, I'm speaking for myself now, I don't know if this is true of Richard. You have to ask him. Assume but, it is. Um, it's so sensitive. Um, I don't want to make it sound highfalutin. But it's so special what we do when we're together. It's so, it's so intimate that I sometimes feel I don't want to take a chance of having anything damaged in private life. I want it to stay the way it is so that when we work, that magic will continue. As you know, sometimes you get off on a tangent in private life and you say, that son of a bee, and well, why did he, and then, no, I don't want to work with that guy anymore. And, it's, it's over, and I don't want that to happen. 
I'm very proud when I work with Gene on something like we just finished, because I know I'm, I belong in this business, you know? And Gene brought this about. He rewrote a script that was okay, but he made it good. And Arthur Hiller, piece of cake. But I love that, that I'm in that. Richard, you, you said that you were particularly pleased with Arthur Hiller because Arthur helped you yes. with your character in playing him not only realistically yes. and comically, yes. but without offending the handicap. Right. What, what was the line? How did he help you well, on that we, level? Well, Gene and I went, both went to different, and Gene might have went to my school, Braille Institute. You were at the Braille? Yes. And to learn a um, blind person or a deaf person, that's what they are. That's all. It's blind and deafness. If you don't avoid that, you have a better chance of not offending. But if you try to be tiptoey around that subject, you could easily offend. It's like excluding. You end up excluding the people. And we w were very careful in the script and the work that we did that we wouldn't do anything that we were consciously aware of that would offend. Believe me. Gene, while Richard was working with the Braille Institute people, where were you studying? The New York League for the Hard of Hearing. Uh, they were a tremendous help to me. I don't know how I could have done any of this without, because it you have to separate fact from fiction and uh, you know if if someone uh, as my character had recently lost his hearing I wouldn't be signing I'd uh, that all the people I knew in life would be people who speak and hear so and especially if I'm denying that I have lost my hearing um, there's lots of tricky stuff there and so I went there, I, I took uh, speech reading classes, lip reading, and um, I would talk to the people in the classes, how do you feel when someone says, what are you effing deaf and uh, all that, and what do you think and what goes through your heart or your mind, and, and they, they loved to talk about it, and they loved the fact that Richard and I were going to do a comedy where the two leading characters had these two disabilities. And we were very conscious of the fact that we were doing a film about people with disability. And we worked very diligently at not offending people. We didn't want to do anything that offended just us at doing it. So we felt safe in the fact that when you see it, you don't feel that uncomfortableness. See, in a drama, it would be easier. Because uh, they say, oh, this is serious. But we're doing an out-and-out, wild, fallout, farce, a comedy, but we take the disabilities very seriously, which, in my opinion, uh, in our opinion, makes it even funnier. But, Gene, when, when Richard was working with the Braille Institute people, and the first time Richard was blindfolded and told to make his room, way through a room mm -hmm. full of furniture, he had a blindfold on. Mm -hmm. What did you do? They made a special impaired. apparatus for me to put in my ears so I could walk through the streets of New York and it can't cut out 100%, but it cut out about 65% of sound. And then I would take little plugs and put them in my ears and go to restaurants and talk to waiters and see if I could get what they were saying, because I knew the subject matter, just from reading their lips. And uh, even if I couldn't, I understood the emotions of trying and how frustrating. And if, you're, if you can't hear and, and you're watching the lips and someone's got a mustache on, you can't see half of, of your sign, of, of your signal. If they're slurping soup in and talking, you can't read their lips. If they put their hand up like that, what are you supposed to do? And there was a lady who was a champion lip reader in the United States. I said, you mean if I go like, she said, don't do that, don't do that. I can't, I can't. She couldn't understand anything just by going like that. Richard, I, I have to make an observation about the two of you and see no evil, hear no evil. Gene has told me in the past about comic inspiration and how on occasion he hears the voice when he's not there of Mel Brooks or the voice of God and because on occasion it's the same voice he can be confused. <laughs> and when I think of what Laurel and Hardy and Jerry Lewis meant to you and how as a kid you'd come out of a movie theater and do Jerry Lewis where everybody's standing in line. Yes. I have to point out that there is a wonderful, endearing, feeling of Laurel and Hardy in this movie with the two of you. That makes Gene yeah. and I happy. Yeah. And neither of you had said. to get fat for it. No, we didn't. 
We've always had that thing in common about a love of Laurel and Hardy, not about fat and thin, but about some silliness. Of their work. Of their work. But innocence and vulnerability. Innocence, purity, and silly, funny things. And uh, it's been there all the time. We don't do what they do, but there's a spirit of what they do that's the same. I thank you both. Thank you. Pleasure seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. That was a good